today I am picking up the 2016 New England Music Awards Country Act of the Year, Miss Annie Brobst. And here she is. Pick her up. Get in the car. Here we go. Hi. I brought you a flower. Oh, look at that. Yes. Oh, that's, that's fancy. Look at that. How, how fun is that? Nobody brings me flowers anymore. Wow, well, you know, standing by a flower. Pot. Well, you, you, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. It's beautiful, well, wonderful. Hopefully, security doesn't yell at you. You know, it's a, they can be crazy. So, how are you? Good. Good. Yeah, pumped. Show yeah. tonight. Pumped. You got a show tonight, and yeah. you got uh, you got a lot of stuff on the calendar coming up. Oh uh, yeah. Shows, single. Yeah. Duo. Yeah. Trio. Full band. <laughs> Album releases, photo shoots, photo shoots. Um, Staying busy. It's good. It's good. But um, the summer. I mean, really. Let's let's start with. I mean, the fact that the summer has been uh, one of your busiest music-wise. Oh yeah, definitely. It's funny to look at like. So on my Facebook page, I put you know the list of dates for the month, or you know my August calendar, or July calendar, and comparing it. If you scroll back and look through old cover photos or old you know, profile photos, you see it was like eight shows for the month, or seven shows for the month, and now we're at like 20 shows <laughs> There's something crazy, so. Well, as you see the demand grow, and as you see the demand for your product grow, is there any kind of restrictions that you put on yourself when it comes to, you know, performing? Do you say, okay, I, I, I can't really sing 15 gigs a week? What, what's, yeah. what's your limits that you put on yourself? Sure, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I mean, I think full band gigs are obviously the most demanding on my voice. Um, acoustic gigs, I can kind of take care of there. I could do a bunch in a row if I needed to. Um, I try to just, you know, any back-to-back -back gigs, I'm trying to think, is this a good opportunity? Is this something, you know, we really need to take for the band or for the name or for the brand? Um, so, yeah, I try to keep that in mind. But full band shows, I try not to do, you know, more than two in a row. That can be a little bit trying. Uh, I know we just did a, th a three in a row uh, a couple weekends ago for the battle, but there's also, you know, the third one was a, s a short set, so it was like 40 minutes. Okay. Um, so definitely something I always think about when I'm booking there. Now, we mentioned the battle. You've been doing a battle of the bands. And, I mean, let's go full disclosure here. Yeah. <laughs> um, I am very familiar with your music. <laughs> I've heard it once or twice. Um, I'm pretty sure that... Um, out of your entire band of full band gigs, I think I'm one of the only ones who's been at every one. Not in the front row. That's true. Not in the front row. More in the, uh, I, <laughs> you see, see the back of my head I see the know. back sides <laughs> of the band and the faces of everybody else. So I'm the drum. Yes. <laughs> but uh, the Battle of the Bands, you've been doing that with Cat Country 98.1. Yeah. It's called the Hometown Throwdown. And what are you battling for? So the, the grand prize is really cool. You get to open on the main stage for Big and Rich, Jody Messina, and Frankie Ballard. How many albums have they sold cumulatively? Oh, God. I, I mean... <laughs> Plenty. Enough that that is a great grand prize. That's a huge opportunity. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so... Um, and uh, so the, the actual show, for those who are watching beforehand, is the, the last battle is going to be on September 11th. 11th, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sunday, September 11th. And it'll be earlier in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, Patriot season opener. Yeah, <laughs> so, night, yeah, we so we're competing time wise with that. So they pushed it back actually. So it's now it's three, um, three to probably like six. I think is um, what they've they've thought would be the time frame. So. So we've got that coming up. Yeah. Um, and then there's a whole myriad of shows. There's still a few more country uh, fests, yeah. outdoor festivals still left in the season. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it culminates with the uh, the Tops Field Fair. Yeah, that's gonna be a good one. And that's one of those, like, I, I grew up in Columbus, and so the Ohio State Fair is just the biggest fair around, the biggest fair I've ever known, and, and you know, one of the great ones out here that reminds me of that is the Tops Field Fair. Okay. Um, so it's cool. It's, it's, it's kind of like a dream to play at these fairs, and, and I know if I grew up out here, I think it would be kind of a dream to play um, at Tops Field Fair, or a goal that you want to hit, you know, in your career at some point. So I think that this is a cool one. We get to do it on a great night, so it's the Saturday night of opening weekend. Um, so that's a great time slot as well, right in the evening when you know everybody can make it out. So great. Pretty proud of that one. So you re you referenced uh, Columbus, Ohio. That's where you were born, where you're from. So let's let's take a step back. What you know, you grew up there, and then when did you come here to 
the New England area. I came here in about uh, 2007. It was right after I graduated college. Okay. Um, so summer of 2007, I picked up, moved out here. I was dating the guy in college who was from out here. Um, so I decided to, you know, chase that a little bit and um, ended up that we broke up about a year later, um, but I was pretty well settled and had just gotten offered my teaching job. So uh, it seemed like a good opportunity to get out on my own. And I bought a or I rented a little studio apartment in downtown Salem, Mass. Okay. So you were you did teaching for a while. Yeah. Um, what did you teach? Teach Spanish to middle schoolers. Okay. Um, so actually, last year was my last year. So that was eight years of, of teaching um, to sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. Wow. Um, fun age. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I could teach them any other subject besides Spanish because they don't like to sit still and they're like awkward and hormonal. And <laughs> it's a pretty fun Wonderful age. time to be oh, alive. Oh yeah. <laughs> Braces. Like, <laughs> it's, a, it's an interesting stage. Miss Probst. <laughs> Miss Probst. Miss Probst. <laughs> one day is the one. Nice. One day is the other. Uh, no, it was a lot of fun. I love those kids. So. You have also done a few different bands since you've been in this area so what has your band history been leading up to your own band sure um so when i came out here the first time i realized i wanted to sing like publicly in front of people because i'd been in choirs growing up but never anything like formal like in a band or creating my own music i am i was karaoke one night and had a few drinks and belted it out and realized this was pretty fun and uh, and then somebody who was there with me, Carrie King, was like, hey, do you want to start a band? And so we ended up putting a band together. That band was a cover band at a wall fan called uh, Pretty Boss. Okay. Um, and from Pretty Boss, we got some YouTube videos out there. And I got a call one day from a band called 36 Red, who was looking for a lead singer. Okay. And um, a female lead. They had a male lead. Okay. Um, and they had seen some of the YouTube videos from Pretty Boss. So okay. one thing kind of led to another. And my first show with them was over for Joe Nichols and wow. Toby Keats. My first show sold out. <laughs> and it was like an hour set. So it was actually good musically where like, okay, it's not a ton of material the first night you're out with them. So it's an hour's worth of material, which is, you know, we know it's like 15 songs or something. It's sure. not a 40 song night. Right. Um, so it was a great outing. It was just like, all of a sudden, you know, I go from playing little bars in Waltham to- It got real. To, yeah. It got real. To 1700 people or whatever it is at Toby's. So 36 Red and Pretty Boss. Neither of them are really country bands. Right. Oh, no, no. Pretty Boss was like top 40 pop stuff. Okay. Um, 36 Red does some classic hits from all across the genres, I think. And um, because country is becoming mainstream, right, right. They, yeah. they pick up those tunes. You hear them yep. on, Absolutely. across the radio stations. Mm -hmm. So. And with me joining 36 Red, I think they picked up more country tunes. That's okay. kind of where my voice started to gravitate as I was figuring out my own sound. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then from there, um, I was with 36 Red for a couple years and um, started writing with Roger Pagopian, so he's the acoustic guitarist in the band. Yeah. Um, you probably see him out with me doing duo stuff as well, duo trio stuff. Um, but he he really brought out that like original creative side, so he's like, you know, I want to um, start writing some originals with you. And we sat in his basement and wrote um, the first song about my journey out here um, from Columbus so that one's Ghost okay. uh, title track of an EP we've got coming out soon so what date is that EP dropping Annie? September 23rd Shop off. Um, and actually to be fair the 23rd is the release so the 24th is when you'll be able to access all of those okay. uh, tunes on but iTunes. you can get one of those tunes right now you on can. iTunes you can we had our first single drop uh, I think last month sometime um, I Could Say No is sure. on iTunes right now so all right. it's pretty cool and uh, we're nearing that 100 download mark. We are. As we currently speak. After it's this, you know, it's going to hit the, uh, you know, yeah. it'll hit the triple digits, uh, or quadruple digits, right? When, when I go to fairs and things like that, we're bringing kind of pre pre cut really uh, uh, versions of the CD. So people still can own the CD right now. It's just, you know, it's not the fancy printed version. It's something I've just been burning and putting together to have some sort of material at these big, um, you know, fairs or things like that before the CD release. So. You've played uh, at a lot of different venues all the way from, you know, obviously you've played in Ohio, you've played in New Hampshire, Massachusetts, yeah. Rhode Island, Vermont, yeah, uh, Maine. Have you done Maine? 
I can't say I've done many. I know we've got one on the calendar. I've actually That's... done like small stuff in West Virginia. Oh, okay. Nashville a little okay. bit. Okay, yes. Too, okay, so, so yeah, let's uh, that's actually a good segue. You do go to Nashville from time to time. I do, yep. Um, so talk to me about what's your, when you go there, it's for fun, but you're also working. Yeah, I mean, I, I like to go there and experience it. It's a, it's a great town. It's a lot of fun. Um, and but, but yeah, I try to set up a show or a songwriting session or something like that when I'm down there. So um, I have some good friends that work at Swing Doors Saloon, which is right off Broadway, just across from Honky Tonk Central. Um, George Strait owns the bar. Okay. Um, and so they let me in. It's acoustic, but it's, it's awesome. That's where I would recommend everybody go when they go down there. It's not on your main path there of Broadway, but it's walking distance, sure. you know, right off of it. And it's... You're, you, you know, you see a guy sitting there with his guitar and you walk in and he's like, hey, you know, what brings you here? Where are you from? And it's conversational and, you know, you may just not get that at the big spots on Broadway. So I would recommend Swing and Doors to anybody. And it's always top of the line talented artists there. Um, one of my favorites, Drew Smith, plays there. I think he still plays there quite often. Um, he wrote a tune off of Randy Hauser's album. And he's just unbelievably talented, unbelievably talented songwriter and performer so he's a lot of fun to go see so take it to the next step now you've got the album release coming out you've got the uh you're making the connections you're doing this this full time what is the the logical next steps in where you go from here do you do more writing are you looking to do more uh variety of venues what what is the the next steps for you how do you plan that out? Yeah, I think there's and there's a lot of um, kind of, I guess, like avenues where you have to think about what's the next step on that avenue. Um, but I think writing is obviously very important. Keep the material fresh. Even you know we've got a great following, especially on the North Shore where I live now, um, and they're always itching for more material, something they haven't heard. So um, trying to keep the originals fresh. So that that's definitely something we need to be doing behind the scenes. And Roger and I actually just wrote one the other night. So okay, exciting. Cool. Um, but career-wise, I mean, I think setting a goal the big goal that we just are about to reach was the ep um, okay. that's a huge move career-wise i think i would love it if in the next year or two um there was some way for me to you know be on tour with somebody i think that's a great way to get around um and, and get around the country a little bit um but that's tough we don't even really know where to start for that so it's going to be asking some of these people when we do the tanya tucker show or anytime we can sit down with somebody who's been so successful to say um to say hey you know how'd you start how'd you do it and not you know i don't need to jump on a tour with tanya tucker but i right. would love to just know what what how did you start where did you start you know so we're just kind of asking the right questions right now it's going to be a long process um but in the meantime, then, it's writing songs and it's um, being a little bit choosier about where we play um, and, and getting, you know, some of those big venues, trying to reach as many people as we can with each show, but not forgetting either where we came from. I love my O'Neill's residency, um, yeah. you know, every week and, and being able to do a show that's not ticketed or covered or anything like that, too. So. What's some of your influences as far as musically, uh, you know, whether it be country, non-country, and what 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 got you into music and what's been the influences? Yeah, um, well, I can remember like when I was a kid, I would blast Britney Spears and sit there with the inserts from her CD with the lyrics. You know, they write out the lyrics on the inside and just sing every song off every CD. And then it was Christina Aguilera, and then it was Whitney Houston or Mariah Carey trying to learn all their tricks that they do with their voices. And, um, so it was it started with that. You know, I think straight pop and, and, and things and little storytelling songs. Um, but then, you know, recently, I think I, I, I mean, I love Miranda Lambert. And you know, a lot of people comment that they can hear that in my voice when we perform and stuff. Um, Sugarland, you love watching her on live performances, looking up YouTube videos, things like that. Never actually seen her live. Really? Yeah. Okay. And I'm a huge fan. I've just never been able to coordinate it right where I could get to her show when she was in town. Sure. Seen Miranda a couple times. Okay. But those are the big ones. I think Casey Musgrave is a great songwriter, and so she's a lot of fun to listen to and hear the quirks that she does and all the clever uh, things in her in her songwriting there. So. so aside from your drummer, talk about your band that you, <laughs> you pull around with you because you have you, you have a wide range of players, and, and it's never, it, I shouldn't say it's never the same band twice, but the, the dynamics of the band change often. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, what I've realized, too, is 
now that we're up to that 20 shows a month or 15 to 20 or whatever it is, you know, not every person is going to be able to do every show. We've got some, some with families and wives and girlfriends and, or just, you know, I would like a night off. So, sure. um, so we've got Wolf who is, um, our bassist mm-hmm. and he's, uh, from Germany. So if you've ever spoken to Wolf, you, you hear his accent for sure, but he's here legally. He, <laughs> Wolf's a lot of fun. Um, he definitely, uh, has some, some funny like twists on jokes and it's such a dry humor. You're like, was that a joke? <laughs> you know, but he's one of the most, I think he's one of the most um, grateful in the band. He says, thank you. Like to all of us after every show, he's so sweet about it. And just what a cool gig this was. What fun this is. Um, yeah. Wolf was actually in my first band, pretty boss. Right. So, and he's got really a funk fusion background. Right. Yeah. And, and you can hear that through his live playing. On, yeah. On gigs. Absolutely. Um, and so then we've got Roger, who I mentioned before. His strength is really the songwriting and like the vision for the whole songs. And he likes to take some of those, you know, popular country tunes that we're doing or pop songs that we're doing and make it our own. And so Roger's a really good asset in that sense, where he's just got a cool vision for things. And ri- songwriting wise, he's uh, he's got the catchiest melodies probably out there right now. So it's been really cool to have that kind of mix with my lyrics or my stories. And it gives it a nice, you know, catchy ring to it. Um, so Roger's our acoustic guitarist out of Lexington, Mass. Um, Rupam, actually Rupam Sam, he came along with Roger because they had been in their band, Force the Fallen, before. Okay. Um, so Roger was in that band and, and still is. Like, I think they do reunion shows every now and again. His brother was in it, moved out to the West Coast. So it, it, it does. they don't get together all that often. But Rupam came from Force the Fallen, um, kind of a punk rock band that they were part of, original band. Um, they have music on iTunes. It's kind of awesome and fun. <laughs> um, Rupam's brother, Shemit, plays with us every now and again. So he fills in. He's kind of like the utility man, right? He plays drums. He sat in when you played um, accordion. Right. Um, right. So that he was plays... a great Irish night. Yeah. March 17th. <laughs> Nothing says St. Patty's Day there. <laughs> at a country bar in Haverhill, Mass. Yeah. Oh, it was good. Um, so, so Shamit is our utility guy. He plays drums, electric, acoustic. He's playing acoustic with us tonight. Um, bass, he fills in on every now and again, too. So, And then um, recently we picked up Ryan DuPont, who is actually a guitar teacher from the Danvers area. Okay. Um, and he is a full-time musician, I'd say, other than his guitar lessons that he does during the day as well. So um, he... He's a main electric guitarist, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, and he does my acoustic gigs with me sometimes, too, so he sings a little bit there. Um, he's just, I think, has been a great strength, especially stage presence-wise, because he's not afraid to jump on things, jump on your drum riser, sure. Sure. you know, or jump out there or whatever. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool having him join us. What's your favorite part of the whole performing live thing? What's your favorite element of it? I think it's... <sighs> that's a good question. Um... I love sharing my originals. You know, I think it's awesome to see when people singing along to the originals, but if they're not singing along to my originals, I love when they sing along to our songs that we're doing. And it's, you know, it's just, there's nothing better than holding the mic out there and they're singing it because they love the song. They're into what you're doing. And, uh, and you know, they're just having a great time and it's our friends or it's new friends. It's new fans. Hopefully. Um, I think that's the best part is seeing them sing along. All right. So the, EP comes out on the 23rd. Yep. You can get the first single of it, though. It's available on iTunes right now. Right now. All they have to do is go to the iTunes store and type in Annie Brooks. That's right. Yep. Uh, and they'll find it there. Mm-hmm. And then for all the show information and all the upcoming uh, dates, whether it be yourself uh, with with the, the duo, a trio, or mm-hmm. full band, where can they get all that information? A lot of places. Uh, AnnieBropesMusic.com. So yeah. AnnieBropesMusic.com is our website. Um, has all that info, and I keep the homepage really updated with kind of what's coming. That's big. Um, but there's a gigs tab, and you can find our whole schedule there. Um, Facebook's a great place. I am all over Facebook all the time now that I have plenty of time during the day too. Um, but we're trying to keep it, you know, keep it fresh, keep something new for you all the time, or maybe it's just me posting my, you know, my. Zucchini ravioli. Zucchini ravioli. Right? I saw that the other night. You <laughs> um, might be trying to like, I don't know. I, I saw that. I'm like, okay, she's trying to do cooking with Ben because that's just <laughs> yeah, boiling water no, with no. flair. No, no. You know, no, no. Yeah. I just, I actually now I realize Instagram 
can hook up to your Facebook pages and not just your Facebook like personal page. Yes, so now my Instagram is uh, popping onto my Annie Brope's music page. Mark Zuckerberg, really current, you sly dog. Right. Yeah. So now my my Instagram zucchini raviolis are popping on over there. So there you, go. you might check it out. See a recipe you guys like, or maybe not. Absolutely. <laughs> you could be like, uh, who's the uh, singer for? Uh, Little Big Town. She looks like the Facebook Live icon because her hair is just like. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Kimberly, know, what's is that? The curly hair, the curly yes. blonde. Yeah. Okay. She has a cookbook. Uh, oh. She does. She has a cookbook. Um, I think it's called Ogussie. That's she has a great partnership with Cracker Barrel. Um, yeah. And uh, so they so sell good. all her products, and uh, so she's got a cookbook out, right. and so having yeah, those different yeah. diversifying her talents or like doing you know i could post some pics of that i cooked you know a famous person's recipe like right. that, that famous country singer you, you could know. do it outside the house that you burned down right yeah pork chops didn't go so well when we first moved in but that's all right <laughs> structurally the house is fine it's fine it's it's all good the george fire don't worry came over said dinner actually didn't burn there you it was go. just the grease around it absolutely so bon appetit. there you go <laughs> and every firefighter walked away with a copy of the ep <laughs> So. Well, Annie, thank you so much for joining yeah. me in the car. I uh, hope you had fun. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to park here at Gillette now and play a show. So you better be there. Uh, but you can find all the information online. Be sure to check out uh, any of the links. Any of the information you need is right in the description of the show. Have fun tonight. All right. You too. <laughs>